tell me um what happened to to make you uh decide to leave tuskegee and go to morgantown west virginia well when i was at tuskegee i had been employed at tuskegee for 15 years prior to going to the army then they were in the midst of formulating the school of veterinary medicine of which i was a founder But I ran across so many avian feces people and DA people. And and what people? DA, dog eyes. Okay. Yeah. Dog eyes is a indifferent people, no good, not going in place, can't see where they're going, don't know where they're going and don't know themselves. These are some of the people that were at Tuskegee at the time? People that were getting away from school, go, I mean graduating from school. Okay. See, that were coming to Tuskegee to be employed. I, I see, okay. To teach. I was the founder of the first veterinary school for blacks in the, in the world. Some of the students were coming at it teach. But they didn't have the background to teach. And I just sent them to school to be trained. Okay. And they didn't like going to school, some of them. Some were in love. Just people that are different. So you eventually uh, left to go to Morgantown. Why Morgantown, West Virginia? I moved there because I, I decided that was a nice, nice place to practice. And you started. And they needed me, and I practiced. And you were one of the, the few African Americans in your community, yes? In the community there? When I first went to Tuskegee, I was the second Afro American there. Then they decided to want a school of veterinary medicine. I was the founder of that school. Uh, Tuskegee now, certain parts as large as University of West Virginia, mm -hmm. and we they got about uh, 500 students. We got as, as many white, Japanese, and Chinese students, and Filipinas, more, because they had trouble getting to school to veterinary medicine at the school. And when you left Tuskegee, uh, the community was a little bit different in Morgantown, yes? And that um, there... Or, or, you... or the town's different because the town now in Tuskegee is open up to whites, blacks, brown, reds, everybody. See, mm -hmm. Tuskegee is an open town, just like uh, maybe a town in the north. How was Morgantown different? I, did, I had to uh, uh, give those people in Morgantown a religion. <laughs> I had to educate them, give them a religion. What did you educate them about? How to live themselves, how to treat the animals, how to pay the bills. And when you say they, which people were you, were you giving a religion to? They, I'm talking now about 90% of the white people. <laughs> My trade was white. Uh, Negroes didn't have the money to treat those that lived there, treat the dogs and let the dogs die. Didn't they bring them to the hospital when they die, uh, when they're ready to die. Mm. So uh, you taught them how to take care of their animals, educated how them. How to take care of the animals, how to take care of themselves, how to take care of the homes. I worked with the governor's eyes, only governments committed to do things. For blacks and whites. How did you feel, or how did you deal with the white farmers that paid you less than they paid others? They didn't pay me less than they paid others. Hell, they paid me what I charged. Okay. They paid me what I charged. Don't nobody call me to do their work and pay me less. Mm -hmm. My fee was different among the white people, the black the same. Now, if they didn't have 
it was different. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have money as a white person, I would do the work free of charge, hoping to he'd pay me for you or charge him enough for him now. Sure. I looked out for the poor and those didn't have by make working that on those that had. Okay, so you you treated the, the animals of, of anybody who needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let an animal suffer. If he needs treatment and if I had the medicine, he would be treated. Well, Instance. I worked in mental health and I was the first black to be the president of mental health. And this is the, the Mental Health Association? That was in Morgantown, West Virginia. Morgantown? West Virginia. And also the people from Pennsylvania would come over to the mental health because they didn't have a mental health society. But eventually, you had to educate people. They didn't mean any harm. They used the word all the lies, nigga, you know, nigga Joe, nigga John, or black salad, black Sue. But I started classes for the white people. All my trade was white. Where you attempted to educate them on the little things that they should know. What kind of education did you give them? How to mix with people. How to be nice to people. And what not to do and what to do. And that they shouldn't fear people. There were a lot of white people, clients, that treated me like a million dollars, but they fed blacks, and I had to educate them, you know. I'd educate them that, what are you worried about? Everybody got the same thing. Everybody look alike nearly, or they don't. I wouldn't expect a man to look like a monkey, you know, or baboon or whatnot, but basically, they act like we do. I've had monkeys come to my hospital, they act just like people. They eat like you, grab at your food, yeah. bite you. Sure. Yeah, man, yeah. monkey bite the hell out of you if you're not <laughs> careful. Until you hit them, let them know they ain't supposed to bite you. But they bite the hell out of you, bring blood to you. So, so you were educating people in the community about sort of a different way to interact with one another. You are educating people in the community about a different way to interact with At Sunday America. school and churches, I did a lot of speaking. That's how I make money if better and educate people. You'd, you'd let them know about animals. You'd let them know what to expect about life. I remember hearing a story about a woman that came to a mental health banquet. She was a featured uh, speaker at a mental health banquet, and you refused to to have dinner because there was a partition because it was segregated. Oh yeah, she was a sick woman. They had a Greek in a big hotel. She would insist on this partition to separate the whites from blacks. And so what did you do? I went there as the main speaker to speak. And I went back home. And did you explain to the community why you did that? They came and got me that night. And what did you say to them? I told them. What did you say? I told them that you had a lot of sick people there. And you can't talk to sick people. They wouldn't understand. What are you talking about with mental health? Mm -hmm. They ought to be in the asylum themselves. Sure. See? Sure. Uh, they weren't... Yes, I was... I, I, I was... The veterinarian, but they had free there. But I was the one that they liked to come to because mm -hmm. I had the modern treatments. I had everything modern. Mm -hmm. But I tell them about the faults. Now, how did you get involved in the Mental Health Association? I love people. Huh? I love people. And I went to one mental health group. There were 40 or 50 women there, three or four men. And then I came, became interested in why men didn't go to these meetings. 
because a lot of the trouble start with men. See? So then we all organize. Now all these white people, not black, I'm the only black one there, we organize to get the white men there. How did you do that? F having parties and food. <laughs> Started in my hospital. I would invite them to my hospital after clinic and uh, start having a little wine and beer and gradually invite the wives, uh -huh. gradually. Or have the wives come pick them up, you know, tell them that, that uh -huh. the wife going to pick them up, you know. And then the wives start to fall in themselves, you know, we got both groups coming. I see. So that was the way that you got both the men and the women to work yeah. with them. Yeah. Started off one, but I got both coming. Now, did you, did, were you counseling people? Huh? Were you counseling people, providing counseling? Yeah. Yeah. I tell men why they couldn't have two or three wives, you know, and tell women why they couldn't have two or three husbands, uh -huh. and tell women stop horsing around, same as I tell men. You got a family 12 or 13 years old, hell, get on the ball and stay home with them. And stage the order to dress up to a hind parts, shake and walk down the street. Take your stuff home and shake it at home, you know. So you probably met, you knew a lot of people in the community. You, you probably knew a lot of people in the community if you were... I knew a lot of people. I knew the rich, knew the best, because they had the trouble. They'd rich man had more damn trouble than poor person. Poor man would stow home and make babies. Rich man would go out and make them on the outside. Mm. You know, okay. and you had to counsel all those people, mm -hmm. whites and blacks, you know. What did you enjoy most about doing that work, the mental health work? What did you enjoy most about doing the mental health work? Telling the people how to straighten up in life. Okay. Because once you told them how to do it correctly, they'd straighten up. Tell those women... Go home and put those damn dresses down on her knees and be like a woman 30 years old, so like 16, 17, <laughs> stop the damn streets and keep your husband at home, you know? Sure. And they do it. A lot uh -huh. of them would do it. Uh -huh. A lot of them would come back. Well, some would come, though, not all. Some would come and say, like, he's still being a cat dog. <laughs> well, I said, hell, you're not a cat. You expect a cat. <laughs> You take care of a kitten, you know. Uh -huh. You can take a kitten and make a cat out of it, you know. But you take care of a cat and make a kitten back again, you know. That's true. Yeah. But you tell them, well, tell them about life. Okay. And, uh, and a lot of them will thank you and go back, but they're back again in a month. Okay. This time you got another man, dog. You got another woman. <laughs> and you call them in together uh -huh. and talk to them. And they cry. But in two or three months, they're back again. <laughs> Could get back together. Yeah. yeah. One of them I called Crying Joe. <laughs> that meant that cat would go out and do every damn thing he could and come back again in the mud and cry. <laughs> called him Crying Joe. Wasn't quite getting the message, was he? Well, yeah, he got the message. He's smart. Uh-huh. Smart. You don't find any dumb ones doing all that. 